Okay, I understand that you're representing the Teaching Schools Initiative. Uh, could you say a little bit about what that is? Yes, uh, I'm uh, the chair of the what's called the Teaching Schools New Technology Advisory Board, and that's a, uh, a board that's been put together by the teaching schools themselves to make sure that they get the proper advice, guidance and support uh, in order that they can prepare the next generation of teachers in initial teacher training and in service teacher training with the appropriate uh, ICT, digital skills, computer science, I and mean, I'm using those terms loosely to cover a whole spectrum of things. <coughs> but the teaching schools have been set up by this government who were not particularly happy with the way that initial teacher uh, education was going on at the moment, uh, about 85% of all uh, uh, teachers come into the profession through a university, either a, a PGCE route through higher education and then they do uh, get jobs and they you know, uh, teach in schools. About 15% go through two other routes which is called the Graduate Teacher Programme and another route called Teach First which recruits them and puts them straight into schools. And interestingly today, Michael Gove made an announcement at the International Conference Centre just down the road here at Birmingham to the Seizing Success Conference that the government's intention is that emphasis will change and schools will take uh, the responsibility for the training of teachers. So at the moment, 85% of teachers are trained in higher education and then going to schools. Over the next three to four years, that balance will shift. I mean, he set a target of 50% uh, will be transferred into teaching schools. Right. So the money will go to teaching schools, and teaching schools can uh, form alliances. So, for example, where you and I both come from in Manchester, there's a teaching school that will be in an alliance with a, univer with a higher education provider, two or three primary schools, perhaps a PRU, a pupil referral unit, so that they can prepare teachers for a whole range of uh, pupils. Okay. Um, what do you see as the advantages of going down this route to teacher training um, uh, as different from, from the past? Well, I, I, I think there are both, there, you know, personally, I think there are advantages and there are also disadvantages. Uh, I think, uh, from my own experience, it's a long time ago now of teacher training, I, I spent far too much time sitting at the back of lecture halls listening about to stories about Piaget and Pavlov um, instead of being in front of uh, you know, young people practicing uh, the craft. But I think behind your question, David, there's a, there's a really important point of principle that I think our colleagues at the University of Manchester, for example, will, will want to fight, and that is whether we train teachers or whether we educate teachers. And there's a, there's, there is a, a, a quite a profound issue about professionalisation. Our, is teaching a profession or is it a craft? And if you uh, do a word search on any of Michael Gough's speeches where he talks about teaching, you'll see he uses the word craft. Right. And so th th there's, there's a fairly fundamental issue. Personally, I think uh, some of the advantages will be um, that you, you know teachers will get the opportunity to, to practice. The schools uh, will, will be close to to them. Uh, on the other hand, you know maybe some of the theoretical underpinning won't get covered quite as much. Right. So I think it, it, it's 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 not quite as simple uh, a, a proposal, and there are lots of resistance to it. Right, uh, we're at a CAS conference now, yeah. so, so this is about computing in yeah. schools. Uh, how do you see that uh, marrying with this uh, movement of teaching schools? I, I think it's essential. I, I think it's absolutely critical. And in fact, um, the Department for Education, one of the reasons that they supported the establishment of the Teaching Schools New Technology Advisory Board is to ensure that we don't go have two separate tram lines. We, we, we don't want... Uh, to have, they don't want uh, the public money to be spent with the BCS and CAS establishing centres of excellence and academies and doing their own thing and at the same time teaching schools going off preparing teachers. So this and one of the reasons I've come down to speak today is to try and uh, you know develop the synergy, obvious synergy that there is uh, between the excellence that you've got, that CAS has got in its centres of excellence, but also the teaching skills. So I think the first thing we need to do is to clearly identify 
where the teaching schools are. There are now 200 of them. There'll be 500 before the next election. And we need to then cross-reference that with where the CAS centres of excellence are. And we need to broker, you and I and Mandy and all the other people need to broker the relationships between the teaching schools and the CAS centres of excellence. Otherwise, I think we're just going to go off down separate tracks. I mean, because it's not a case of computer science or ICT. It's a case of a continuum going right the way from digital literacy, uh, young people, and assistive technology, digital literacy, uh, ICT. Uh, I mean, if I put my uh, Toshiba hat on, uh, the technical skills that the industry needs, the sort of technical skills that Leon's now working and practicing on here, um, and then computer science as well. So it, it's a whole spectrum of things, and I think it's incumbent upon us as professionals, I'm an education professional, and you are a new computer science professional, it's incumbent upon us to get this story together rather than for it to go off separately. It's not as simple as ICT or the Raspberry Pi. It's much it's more complex than that. It certainly isn't. Okay, thank you. That's okay. Really good.